all right so uh, in this uh, particular lecture there will be a clarification on uh, uh, this uh, critical angle aspect of uh, uh, you know uh, refraction process during uh, uh, you know uh, the transference of a ray of light from one medium to another okay so uh, i am assuming that you know the critical angle concept so uh, because this particular diagram that i'm going to draw is based on a a prism what kind of a prism as you can see i'll uh, i'll just label this out so that you get a better understanding of what kind of a uh, prism i am going to take so you can see that this angle over here is going to be 90 degree and this angle over here i am taking as 45 degrees as well as this angle as 45 degrees okay so if you want to have a look at this triangular face of the prism, prism uh, naturally uh, will not be a two dimensional figure, it will be in three dimensions. So there will be different faces uh, which we can't uh, see. Uh, if you are looking from front, we will only see a triangular uh, face like this. So in here, the uh, main uh, angles that you can see is this 90 degree angle and these two 45, 45. So 45, 45 obviously makes it 90 plus 90 is 180. Okay, so essentially, I will not be wrong if I do this. Now these two things that I have marked over here in mathematics, so you all understand that these two are equal sides and therefore I have marked them in a similar kind of a fashion okay so what is the name going to that is going to be given to this particular triangle if I talk only in terms of a triangular face like this so I can call this as a right angled isosceles prism please keep a note of what I'm trying to tell you here this triangular face if you only look at the triangular face of this prism you will see that there are two equal sides equal sides because they are opposite to equal angles okay so therefore this side and this side they will be equal and also this angle is 90 degrees so I can say that this is an isosceles right angled triangle okay now how does this particular uh, you know uh, prism face behave when there is a light ray that enters it in a particular direction okay so now we are going to discuss two different directions and i'm going to show you how to actually mark all the different uh, angles which is important from your board perspective also if you you're a student of class 10 so let's see the easier way out first so let's say that there is a ray of light okay which is falling in this particular fashion okay so if you have a ray of light passing in this particular fashion now this particular fashion means that it is falling at 90 degrees so it is falling at it is falling at perpendicular in a perpendicular kind of a way to the surface now which surface are we talking about this time if you look at this triangle this side is the hypotenuse of this right angled isosceles prism okay so this is the hypotenuse so our ray of light is traveling from air let's say for example this is air this is a naturally glass okay so it is falling at 90 degrees so obviously there is no bending that is going to happen so it is going to continue to go in the fashion that it was going without bending okay so this is the way in which it goes okay now Supposing that it meets this particular side at this particular point of incidence, okay? Now, there are a number of ways in which this ray can behave, okay? This ray can actually enter the air medium. This can actually graze along the surface or it can come back into the same medium, which is the glass medium. So, here, you not naturally, you have the glass because this is the glass prism, okay? So, now you see forget about this particular surface this the work at this particular surface is over now when this ray reaches over here okay the first thing that you are going to draw because it is falling obliquely this time on the surface here we did not draw any normal or anything because it was falling at 90 degrees so it will continue to go at in the same direction but here is not that same case so we will draw a normal 
okay so this is that normal normal is always at 90 degrees to the surface this is the surface so this is the normal okay so first of all i am going to mark this angle which is my angle of incidence for this surface please note children that we are focusing more on this surface right now because the ray has reached here and i want to know the direction of the ray after it strikes this particular surface which is separating glass and air so here again you have air okay so once it reaches over here we cannot decide which way it will go unless and until we know this i so let us see how we can find this i now you see use this particular triangle this is also a right angle triangle as you can see this angle is 90 degree this was already 45 so this remaining angle this third angle will naturally come out to be 45 using simple mathematics sum of three angles of a triangle is 180 degrees so since this is 90 this is 45 this also becomes 45 okay now when this angle is 45 and you know that this is a normal so normal will make a full angle of 90 degree to the surface okay so half of this is 45 so the next half also becomes 45 okay so my angle i has become 45 it has actually not become 45 it was already 45 the only thing that we have done is we have found out that angle because the question did not tell us at what angle it is going to fall the question only told us that it is falling at 90 degree to the hypotenuse so after that it is all our work to analyze okay so my angle i becomes 45 now what is this process taking place this process is movement of ray from glass to air okay this movement is from glass to air see the ray is already in glass and it is trying to move to air so this is like an optically denser medium to an optically rarer medium okay so when will the ray undergo total internal reflection when my angle of incidence is greater than my critical angle and you know that for glass and air pair the critical angle c is 42 degree for a particular kind of a glass that we use angle c which is the critical angle is 42 degrees okay so that's a given that's a given once you select this glass prism and air then you have basically set your angle c as 42 degrees now comes the comparison is my i which is angle of incidence greater than c or not so you can see here my angle i is 45 whereas my c was 42 only so my i is greater than c so which is the required condition for total internal reflection to take place therefore the ray will come back to the glass medium and the moment it comes back to the glass medium it will follow that total internal reflection rule now what is that rule let me just write this 45 more clearly so you can see that this is my incident ray and this is my reflected ray because this time at this surface refraction is not taking place it is simple reflection by the virtue of what by the virtue of total internal reflection so you can say t i c which is total internal uh, reflection sorry t i r total internal reflection and the moment the word reflection comes then angle i is equal to angle r so my this angle also becomes 45 therefore this angle also becomes 45 why because 45 45 normal 90 makes a 90 degree angle okay again this is 90 this is 45 so this will again become 45 okay so you see starting from here eventually you can come across the different values of the different angles at which the ray is falling now is the work at this surface over yes now the ray has reached this surface which is the third surface again it is falling at an oblique angle it is falling obliquely okay so we'll have to draw a normal so once again let me draw that angle draw that normal uh, line that we have to draw which is always at 90 degree to the surface okay so i'm going to draw 
this normal okay why do i have to draw the normal because i have to get this angle i again why because now this surface work is over i am concentrating on this surface so for this surface where is my incident ray this is my incident ray where is my normal this is my normal so this is my angle i so naturally since this is 45 this again will become 45 because 45 plus 45 is 90 normal makes normal makes a 90 degree angle so my angle i again becomes 45 and again you will see that 45 is greater than 42 which was my critical angle so again there should be total internal reflection so the ray will again come back to the same medium okay so it is in this fashion that it gets again totally internally reflected and again follows that i is equal to r rule so this angle again becomes 45 because of which this angle becomes 45 45 45 is 90 therefore the third angle becomes 90 and you can see again that the ray had entered from the hypotenuse side in a perpendicular fashion and after two successive total internal reflections at this surface and at this surface the ray is again falling at 90 degree to the hypotenuse this time it is coming out from glass to air and it will continue in the same fashion why because it is a perpendicular incidence okay so now the idea here is this is actually the process how you complete the diagram okay but you can also be asked a question on this in a different kind of a way where you may be given a let's say an object pq okay so there is an object pq this arrow is your object so this object is going to be reflected through this particular the image of this particular object is going to be formed when seen through this particular prism okay so you start from the tail end this becomes the tail end okay so this will become your tail end and when you start from the head end which is the arrow head you will show a similar kind of a diagram okay so the ray goes like this comes here and then naturally gets uh, you know totally internally reflected so it reaches uh, let's say here okay so this is the fashion in which it travels reaches over here and then again perpendicular move like this okay so when you start from the arrowhead this is your object where is the image of this arrowhead going to be formed so you can see follow the path of the ray so this is the arrowhead goes here comes here comes here so you will have an arrowhead here okay the tail end will produce an image of the tail end okay so the image here will be that of the tail end so you can call this as q dash you can call this as p dash okay so let me write that uh, more clearly using a different so this end will be q dash this end will be p dash okay so essentially the reason for taking this up was that if you have an object which is lying with its face to the left side once its image gets formed after these successive total internal reflections the image the head of the image will be facing the opposite way in which the object had its head so the object pq you can see the head was to the left whereas in the image the head is to the right okay so essentially what this prism which is a 45 45 90 prism or a right angled isosceles prism what has this done to the image of this object it has actually laterally inverted the image of this object okay so if the object was pq the image is q dash p dash so you can see that it is laterally inverted okay one more point here uh, uh, that you should keep in mind is that this was an incidence from the side of the hypotenuse if you try to do the same from this side you may not get this particular situation okay so you can try that out on your own but this is one case in which you get a laterally inverted image i hope you have followed the way in which you are supposed to mark all these uh, angles okay